It was about a year ago. Was it the time I really started following Elvis and Elvis travels? Zaya Marshall Camus. Let's call him Zaya Marshall Camus because his name is not Elvis. He is nothing like Elvis. He doesn't look like Elvis. He doesn't sing like Elvis. He doesn't even have Elvis's mannerisms. He's if he's a Elvis uh, impersonator or Elvis tribute artist, he's the worst there ever was, uh, hands down. Um, seriously. But um, what I want to talk about is uh, about three months ago, I, I re, re, uh, made contact with an old friend, uh, a guy I went to truck driving school with and worked, and he also worked at uh, Stevens Transport. He was there for about a year. I worked for Stevens Transport for about two and a half years. He worked there for about a year, and then he went to work for Prime Incorporated out of Springfield, Missouri. Um, what... And, but we, we kind of contact, I stayed in contact with a lot of the guys who went to truck driving school. And the way it works, you know, you go to your truck driving school for uh, about a month, a little over a month. And um, at the end of truck driving school, you get your CDL because you test for it. And the truck driving school is just to teach you how to pass the truck driving test. It really doesn't teach you how to become a truck driving school truck driver <coughs> after you get your cdl then you go through training to uh become a truck driver an over the road truck driver you can't just get right out of truck driving school and get in a truck and become a truck driver there may be a few people who could pull that off but most people can't so what they do is they put you with a trainer and with the company i worked for stevens transport you were with the trainer you could be with the trainer for two months but you better learn what you're doing in two months. It only took me a month. With After a month, I had I'd finished all the goals that they had set for their trainees. And I met all the goals and expectations. And after going, I had to go through two different trainers because Stevens Transport wants you to work in different regions of the United States. And the trainer that I was with that I started with, he was on a dedicated route. So he only got into about three different of the regions. I think there were six regions. The United States was broken up into six regions. And you had to drive in each region. You had to meet certain tasks in each region. One was to bump a dock in the northeast part of the United States where the docks are a lot tighter because they're older. And they're made for when trucks are smaller. So these bigger trucks have a little more trouble getting in, in and out of them. And so I had to bump a few docks up there, and I did that. And I learned how to back the truck properly. I learned how to, you know, use my hours. And back then we were using, uh, we used, um, we didn't have the electronic logs. We had paper logs, and we had to learn how to fill out those properly. And, um, you know, no mistakes. And so I had to fill out logs the whole time, learned how to do that. It's a little easier now because you got electronic logs. you got a computer that does that for you now. But when I went through, it was a lot harder. And I, I did it on a 10-speed a truck, not on an automatic. And, you know, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. But anyway, that's uh, that's what I did. And there's this guy, and I can't tell you his name. Uh, he told me not to mention his name. He told me there were a few things. That, he told me I could I could tell on the video about this Zaya Kamu guy. And that's what he called the Zaya Kamu guy. Um, he never met Zaya. He works in the back office. But he he drove for um, Prime for several years. Uh, then he uh, worked as a dispatcher. After he got married, he wanted to didn't want to be over the road. And they told me he, had to, he lived in Houston. He had to move up to Springfield, Missouri. And he moved up there, him and his wife. And they bought a house up there. And he, he's making a career out of working at uh, Prime Incorporated. And... Um, you know, he's worked in several different offices up there, but he works in the main office. They have a lot of people in the main office, so ain't worried about him being exposed that way. Um, but, uh, you know, I told him about Zaya Kamu, and he looked into it and found out <laughs> a lot of things. Okay, now, a year ago was when Zaya, it was like December 7th or something that Zaya quit driving a truck, and he was crying that he didn't have no way of getting home, that he was abandoned up in uh springfield up in uh oh, what the name of that town is there's there's a truck stop on both sides of the highway up there there's a pilot on one side and a, a um 
a Flying J on the other, and he got dropped off there. Um, but what Zaya doesn't tell you that he was abandoned there, but that isn't really the truth. He was fired, okay? He didn't quit. His trainer didn't quit. The company just fired him um, because he, he could not meet. And see, this is another thing about Prime. Prime is, is the most patient of all trucking companies. They will let you stay with the trainer up to a year. Now, I was with Stevens Transport. You'd only have two months. Most trucking companies only give you a couple months. Um, but Prime will let you work with the trainer for a year. They'll switch you to new trainer, new trainer, and tell you to learn how to drive a truck. They know that some people learn slower than others. But with Zaya Camus, they knew that he would never learn how to drive a truck. He couldn't follow instructions. That was what was written on his DAC report, that he can't follow simple instructions. That, uh, you know, he refused to drive. You know, he only wants to, he only drives when he feels like driving. You can't do that as a truck driver. When you're a truck driver, you have uh, appointments to meet. You got to pick up your load at a certain time. You got to drop it off at a certain time. You got to do your best to get those appointments met. You know, sometimes you don't meet an appointment. You're stuck there till the next day. Walmart, if you're if you're a half an hour late for your appointment time, they won't. They'll make the appointment the next day, and you you have to go to the nearest truck stop and spend the night there, and come back the next morning or whenever and deliver again. So, you know, a lot of a lot of places are like that, especially when you're hauling refrigerated. It's refrigerated, you know, they have time slots. They need the trucks to be there at certain times. And and he was driving refrigerated, and they're they're the most. Uh, so, you know, him driving whenever he feels like it doesn't really work uh, over the road, and he couldn't back no matter what. And the reason he can't back, because you can teach just about anybody to back a truck. But Zaya, you can't teach because he's not teachable. He won't listen. They, they said that he kept talking over the instructor when the instructor was telling him what to do, and he'd change the subject to something else, and, and he just couldn't drive, and he refused to drive sometimes, and and the trainer just had enough of him. Couldn't Zaya could not, what couldn't even get past the basic trucking uh, things, the skills that he needed to learn. The only thing he could do is he could drive pull out of the truck stop decently he made corners good he, you know which is a skill that some people have difficult he was he picked that up pretty good he could turn that trailer around a corner pretty good other than that he couldn't do anything else you know um I, there was nothing about speeding that i heard but but it was the basic things that said that his uh his report said that he couldn't follow the simplest of instructions now let that sink in. Zaya Marshall Kanmu could not follow the simplest instructions. That's what's written. And when any other truck driving company, see, truck driving companies go to this thing called a, a DAC report. Okay. And that's what truck driving companies write down a DAC report on all drivers. And so when you go apply for a job for another trucking company, they look at your DAC report. And that's what the other truck, you know, did you abandon the truck? Did you do this or that, how many accidents you had. A lot of accidents truck drivers have are on private property so that it never gets reported to the authorities. That just, you know, you back into someone else's trailer and damage their trailer. The company you work for pays that company for the trailer. That's how it works. So you're not getting a ticket for it, but it goes down in your DAC report. So when I don't think Zai hit any trailers. He didn't tell me anything like that. But uh, so Zaya lied um about his about the circumstances and here's another thing that's very important about him being abandoned he was not abandoned at that truck stop the trucking company told him when they fired him they said we'll give you we'll pay for your uh cab ride to the bus station and we will pay for you a bus to anywhere in the united states you want to go that's what they told him he had a free bus ticket to go home and a cab ride to the bus station and a hotel if the bus didn't come there till the next day. They were pay, they paid, picked up the bill for all those things and told him directly on the phone that they would do those things. They do that with every driver, whether they fire them or the driver quits or whatever. They always give offer them a ride home. They give them a ride to the terminal where they train to become a truck driver, and they also give them a ride home from wherever they he last worked for the company. Just about every trucking company will do that for you. 
So Zio's lying that he needed the money. He just wanted to fly home. He didn't want to take a bus because he's too good to take a bus. And that's the truth. So now you know the rest of the story. Zaya was a failure as a truck driver, never was a truck driver, okay? He never drove a truck without an instructor sitting on his, sitting next to him. He never, ever drove a truck without a truck driver telling him every little thing he needs to do. Okay, turn your turning signals on. Okay, put your seatbelt on. Okay, pull in, pull up. Okay, stop, wait for these cars to pass. Pa basically, that's how they did the whole way he was in truck driving school for the time he was in there. That's pretty much his trucking career is an instructor tell him every little thing what to do. So when Zion next time brags about his truck driving life and how great of a truck driver and how he was a truck driver and how he knows thinks drives and thinks like a truck driver like he was telling Rosie, it isn't true. He's a failure as a truck driver just like he was a failure as a security guard, just like he's a failure as a YouTuber because he's only making about $300 a month from uh, AdSense. And the rest of the money he gets from begging, he's that's all he is, is a beggar. You know, he's a beggar and a liar. You can't believe anything he says. He's a scammer. He doesn't care about you. You give him money. You think he cares about Norm F? You think if Norm F stopped giving him money or Norm F couldn't afford to give him money anymore, you think he'd give one, one cent about Norm F or do anything to help Norm F? He wouldn't. That's the kind of person that Zion Marshall Camus is. He's a P.O.S., He's a failure as a truck driver, and he should never call himself a truck driver. And if he ever does, call him out on it. I don't go to his hangouts. I don't waste my time. If I do watch his hangout, it'll be on in, on cast. But um, that's the truth about Zion Marshall Camus. And that's the truth about his truck driving career. All right, everybody. Hey, have a good day.